Hey there, it's Donna Joy from Donna Joy Coaching uh, and also I'm the creator of the free Facebook group, The Online Marketing Guild. Um, so any of you who are in The Online Marketing Guild, have a look because yesterday I posted the first video in the GIMP series, so GIMP being the image manipulation software that I use to create a lot of my um, graphics and stuff for my website. So I've put um, video one, which is just a basic introduction to GIMP and how it works in there yesterday. Um, and earlier in the week, I also posted a tracking sheet. So um, a WMO, DMO, so weekly method of operation, daily method of operation tracking sheet that I use to keep track of what I'm doing every week. So I can go back and analyze and make sure I'm doing um, money-making activities and not just running around like a um, chick with its head cut off um, and then not wondering why I'm not making money that week. Okay, so today what I wanna do is I wanna talk about marketing terminology with you. Uh, I know when I first started on this long road of um, the long learning curve of marketing that I would hear these acronyms and terminology sort of bandied around by marketing gurus when you're listening to it and I wouldn't always know what they were talking about. So today I just want to go through a list that I've created, all the ones that I can think of, but feel free, please feel free to uh, pop a comment in the um, below this live if you can think of anything that I've missed because I am also creating a blog on this subject. Um, so if I've missed any out, let me know and I'll add them into the blog and then I will be sharing the link to that blog on in the online marketing guild. All right, so the first uh, marketing terminology is, and you probably all heard of this one, is traffic. So when we're talking about traffic, we're talking about, basically, we're not talking about cars and planes, we're talking about people coming to your, whatever it is you want. So your website, your lead um, generation form, something, anything that you've got that you want people to come to, whether it's um, you're giving something away or you're selling something, um, so it's traffic. So we get traffic from um, Google, uh, you can get organic traffic from Google and Facebook. You can also get paid traffic, so paid traffic also from Google, Facebook, solo ads, um, you know, Twitter, anything that's got paid marketing, and, and also your Twitter, your pin interest, they're all organic free traffic as well. Okay, so I know I just used the word lead generation. So basically when we start to talk about lead generation and lead magnets, what we're getting into is the field of attraction marketing. And you've probably all heard of attraction marketing if you're online marketers, because that's basically what we're trying to do. Um, and Mike Dillard, he didn't invent attraction marketing, but what he did is he worked out how to use it for network marketers, basically how we can use attraction marketing. Um, and one of the things to do with attraction marketing is after you've identified your avatar, um, so I realized I didn't put that word in. So avatar is basically, when we talk about avatar, we're talking about um, who is your ideal customer, who is your direct prospect, who you wanna work with. So if you're selling something, who is it that you wanna sell this to? Because if we're trying to market to everybody, whether it be marketing a product or service or ourselves, if we're marketing to everybody, we're marketing to no one. So we need to work out who our unique person is, exactly who they are, what sex they are, what age they are, what they do, are they working class, are they um, educated, do they have a uni degree, who who basically, are, who that person is, so who our avatar is so that we can put our offer in front of them so we can work out, tailor it for them, um, but then also put it in front of them and um, and then we've got a, a much greater chance of success and our marketing can become profitable and things like that. Whereas if we're just like, but everybody needs my product, um, then we're not gonna get anywhere because not everybody needs our product, not everybody wants our product. We have to work out who it is that needs and wants our product and then put our product in front of them. So that's the importance of an avatar. Um, and so when I'm talking about lead generation, lead magnet, then we're working out who our avatar is and we're working out something that they want that we can give them for free. Um, so lead generation is generating leads. So we talk about traffic. So when someone comes to your site as traffic and they make, might, you have a lead magnet on your site. So a lead magnet is something to say a free PDF that you're giving away. Um, so for instance, on my health club, for over 40 year olds, the fyclub.com, you can go check that out. On the front page at the moment, I've got a video of me talking and then I'm giving away a PDF I've put together on the top 10 reasons you can't lose weight or if you do, can't keep it off. And that's a PDF that they have to put their email in to download. And then once they put their email in, they then go into um, my automated email system. Okay, so I've generated a lead. So the traffic came, um, but they, they don't do anything, they're just traffic. Um, but once they've actually filled out their email, they become a lead or a prospect. Okay, so that's lead generation and lead magnets. Um, now, you might have seen that I mentioned about automation a second ago. I, I mentioned um, uh, my email automation. So automation is not just emails. Automation is when things are happening automatically within your business. And that's what our aim is to create. We want to create automation without a business so that we're not tied to our business all the time. 
So you can have automation happening within your social media. So for instance, I use, um, for my Facebook, um, I use a thing called Post Planner just to automatically get some stuff going into my Facebook pages and groups every day. So funny stuff, inspirational stuff, things of um, value it might be. I might come with Post Planner, the beautiful thing about it is that it's not like Hootsuite where you're just setting up your stuff and putting it in. Sorry, I've got a little dog down here <laughs> trying to get my attention. I wonder what the noise was. She's gotten lost under my desk. Hang on, let me just get her up. Oh, is my little girl. This is my little old 15-year-old. So she's got getting a bit old. Eyesight's not great. Hearing's not great. And her sister has stolen her bed. So that's the problem at the moment. I'll just put her down on a blanket. Um, sorry. So automation. We want to um, have things automatically happening. So I use Post Planner just to automatically be getting stuff into my Facebook pages and groups every day um, so that I can be concentrating more on just putting value in there rather than just having to put... Um, you know looking for funny stuff every day but I the reason I'm putting that sort of stuff in there as well so that there is things padding out just between my Facebook lives and my articles just some more light-hearted things and you know the funny thing is that I can go and put a blog on there no one will comment on it no one will probably even look at it but I stick something funny on there about a cat and then you get comments okay so automation is about anything happening automatically within your system so email automated series that you've already set up you do the work once and it keeps working for you every time a lead comes in they work through your order your automation of your emails um, you can have your social media happening automatically, your sales funnels happening automatically. So you can actually set up a sales funnel so that people are coming in, they're working through your funnel, they're buying stuff. Um, it's automatically getting emailed to them. Things are all happening automatically. And yes, it's work to set it up once, but once you've set it up once, you're just tweaking it, split testing it, things like that. You're not having to do it every day. So that's what automation is. Um, okay, so congruency. I mean, obviously congruency is not just uh, a marketing term. I mean, either it's automation. Um, congruency is making sure that things match. So you might want to make sure that your branding is congruent so that basically your header on your website is the same or, or what? almost identical to your header on your social media, on Twitter, or on Facebook, on YouTube, um, on your email headings, everything. So it's all congruent, it all works together. So you basically people see it here and they recognize it. It's like brand recognition is congruent, okay? Um, your offers have to be congruent as well. So it's not just about branding, but your offers. So you might, um, you know, if you've got a weight loss supplement that you're selling, you're not gonna make your offer um, about um, how to market to people or same with marketing you're not gonna make your offer about weight loss you know they're just not congruent they don't work together and if you're going to attract someone in who's going to be interested in your weight loss product they don't care about marketing that they're not that person okay so you need to make sure that your offers are all congruent with each other um, and that's something else I talk about later on is a bait and switch where things aren't congruent and but done purposefully as opposed to people just getting exciting and thinking that everybody would be interested in everything. So for instance, uh, when I'm putting a course together on branding, um, I'm going to be giving a, a, a lead generation away about the top 10 branding mistakes that people make, which I'm working on at the moment. Um, I'm not going to be giving away um, something on sales funnels. Okay, so I want people to come in um, that are interested in branding and then later on I will market my branding course to them. So that's about congruency. So you've heard me mention funnels a few times. So basically when we're talking about a funnel, a funnel is a process that we take people through to basically to try and get them to do what we want. Okay, so um, we call it a funnel because it starts big at the top, small at the bottom, meaning that we put a whole heap of people on the top and then only a few people pop out the bottom. Okay, not everybody's kind of come all the way through your sales funnel. Some people might go to your, you know, they'll see your Facebook ad, they'll click on it, they'll go to your website, they might watch the video about your, you talking about your free giveaway, but then they don't fill out their email. So they've stopped at the first stage of the funnel. Other people may fill out that free giveaway, uh, get the free giveaway, um, and then you upsell them onto something, uh, and they don't do it. So you might do a tripwire offer within your funnel. Um, other people will take that tripwire offer and then move down to the next stage of the funnel. And those people, you keep um, stepping them up through the funnel, offering them more and more and more until basically they pop out the bottom of the, whatever that funnel was. So it doesn't, um, there's sales funnels, which is, you know, what I was just talking about. But can, you can also have funnels that you walk people through um, in network marketing. You might be looking for someone in your team. So you might walk them through a consult funnel. Um, so there's all sorts of different funnels that you can um, take people through. Um, but the sales funnel is the ones that are used most commonly because we're making money. So tracking. Tracking is when we are keeping track of what people are doing on our website or anything that we're doing so that we can um, keep 
Oh, so it's not just for people, but I'll just use this thing first. So basically tracking is when we're tracking stuff so that we can keep an eye on it and make sure it's working. So um, you heard me talking about my tracking sheet, my DMO um, and WMO sheet that's on my, I'm giving away at the moment. So it's a two page, it's on the side, two page sheet that I have for, and it's a week. Um, that's me tracking my own activity so I can go back and look at it. Okay, so I, I can, um, in weeks to come, if something's not going right, I can look back and go, oh, well, no wonder I'm not making any money because I haven't actually been doing Facebook Lives or I haven't been doing anything that's going to generate income. I haven't been looking at my, um, split testing my ads and making sure that, you know, I'm getting, I'm actually making a profit on my break even funnels, things like that. So um, that's that sort of tracking, but we also track people coming to our website and we use that with pixels. So we take Facebook pixels from in our ad manager put them on our website and Facebook is basically tracking people that are coming and what they're doing on our website okay and we can we can use that for retargeting purposes um, and all sorts of things in the future so you always want to be tracking everything that's happening um, so landing page a landing page is something or somewhere that you're driving your leads to so you might have a Facebook ad when they click they get taken to a page that's the landing page where someone lands okay um, and it's normally, and normally a landing page is where you might be exchanging, us giving them something in exchange for their email address or you might be selling them something. Okay, so that's a landing page. And it's kind of the first stage of a funnel is a landing page. Um, solo ads. So solo ads is a different type of um, advertising that I really actually only came, up, came across um, probably about four or five months ago when I started uh, training through an online marketing group that is one of the affiliate programs I'm working with at the moment. And they basically are very strong in using solo ads. So what a solo ad is, is an ad that you are running to someone else's email list. So there's people out there, solo ad vendors, who have are generating big email lists um, and they're into interest types. And then you can run an ad to so you pay them to send an email out to their list which has got your opportunity in it okay and um, it's it's normally people who are interested in making money but you can do solo ad vendors who have people with weight loss um, you know all sorts of things people who may be interested in in bodybuilding um, stuff like that so you can run your ad in front of them and the good thing about a solo ad is you pay per click um, so you're not paying per impression like you are with Facebook where Facebook is basically saying okay well you tell me who you want me to put it in front of and you're going to kind of pay for impressions as well as sort of click stuff so if you've chosen a lousy target market and they're not clicking you're still paying and you might be getting nothing with a solo ad you know and, and also with Facebook you don't know how much it's going to charge you basically it depends on the competition and and all sorts of things like the congruency within your ad and the value and you know there's all sorts of things within Facebook where they decide how much they're going to charge you um, Whereas with solo ads, you know exactly how much you're going to pay per click. So there's a real advantage to that. Now, I'm not sure where solo ads are going in the future, especially um, in the euro area where they're just bringing GDPR. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that area. But um, they can be a really nice way to start to build your email list um, and get people who are interested in something that you are providing and start to have a relationship with these people and grow some night. night. The, the know, like, and trust value within this relationship so that when you do have something that you're offering them, they're more inclined to buy. Uh, so opt-in. Opt-in is when someone opts into something that you're offering. So you take them to your landing page, you've got an offer there, here, get my free PDF on the 10 uh, ways to lose weight, and they fill it out and basically they hit yes and their email goes in and they've opted in. So that's what an opt-in is. Um, and so a squeeze page is a type of landing page, basically where you're squeezing them to give you their email address. Um, so it's, you might have a squeeze page and landing page used interchangingly. Um, but a landing page doesn't have to be a squeeze, a squeeze page. Um, split testing is when you are testing, starting to test your, uh, your opt-in, your landing pages, your squeeze pages, your Facebook ads, anything that you're doing, um, even your funnels, landing pages and stuff in your funnels. So what you're doing is you're testing, um, you might have a Facebook ad, and then you clone it so it's the same Facebook ad and then you might split test them against different um, audiences. So for instance within my writing uh, with my novels I um, have a series um, of cozy mystery series that is Janet Ivanovic is uh, very relevant. So I might split test the same ad to fans of Janet Ivanovic and then I might also split test them against say Marin Keys or something like that and see who I'm getting the lower the cheaper click rate with. 
um, and so I can split test them that way. And if I really want to go further, it's like not just who's going to click, but then who's going to convert as well on the landing page. So then I might also have two landing pages split testing against each other. So when they come to the landing page, I might have just a photo of the book versus an, um, a video of me talking about the book. Now, the important thing about split testing is that you just want to change one thing at a time and run it for long enough that you can see a marked difference in the conversion. Um, and then when you get a winner, then you change one more thing. If you're changing more than one thing at once, you don't know what the difference was. You can, you can just change the color of the, the bold or the font. You can just change um, the subject line. You can change what you say in the button to get them to click. But if you keep split testing and split testing and split testing against each other, you're going to start increasing your conversion rate um, over time. So you can take a very badly performing landing page with split testing to a very good performing landing page. And through that process, you're learning about what makes people click. Now, from opportunity to opportunity and even landing page to landing page, it, it just differs. People are funny. So you need to keep tweaking and split testing um, and you will get better and better at knowing what makes people tick basically. Uh, so that's split testing. It's a very important process if you want to improve. I mean, you can set all this stuff up in place and then just leave it and go, but what's the point if you're not continuously improving? You're not continuously sharpening your instrument. If you think of your advertising as your instrument, uh, if you're not continuously sharpening your sword to make it as effective, as sharp as possible, you're wasting money and you're not being as effective as you could and you're not getting in as many people as you could. So you want to keep split testing. Uh, a bait and switch is what I was talking about before. Is basically I should have had it up with congruency. A uh, bait and switch is where um, you bait people in and then when they get to the landing page it's switched so it's not even relevant, it's not congruent. And it's something that Facebook heavily frowns upon. So you know, you don't do it if you're a serious marketer because you piss people off and you've paid for a click and they get to your landing page and they're not going to um, convert. They're not going to give you your email because you were going on about weight loss and when they get there, it's actually about Viagra or something like that. Okay, so um, serious marketers do not bait and switch. Facebook is frowns against it. Okay, um, and as I said, you're going to get customer complaints and you're going to basically piss them off, which is not what you want. So retargeting is when you are retargeting people who uh, may have already come and engaged with you. So for instance, um, you can retarget through Facebook using Facebook pixels on your website. So website, so basically if I have a, um, people have clicked on my Facebook ad, gone to my author website about getting my book for free, but then they never ended up on my thank you page, which means that they didn't put their email address in, you end up on the thank you page. Then I could retarget an ad just at that group of people that went to this page, but did not end up on this page. And I could change the ad a little bit. Maybe next time have a video of me talking about the book, trying to encourage them to, you know, oh fine, I'll give them my email. Okay, so that's retargeting. But you may have noticed that you've gone to a website and you've looked at a product and then you haven't purchased it and you've gone over to even Yahoo and whoa, hey, funny, it's, it's sitting there like there's an ad on Yahoo um, that is that very product that you're just looking at. So that's retargeting and I don't know how they do that with cookies and all sorts of things. But um, Or you might find that uh, you, know, you go somewhere, you do it and then um, it pops up in your Facebook uh, feed. Okay, so that's retargeting. Um, so CRM you've probably heard of, so that's an acronym for Customer Relationship um, Manager. So basically it's a software program that collects the data of your leads and things like that and allows them, you to go in and but make notes, um, so if you've contacted them, um, if you've got a system where they add tags, so you can basically, uh, so for instance, um, Entreport uses tags, not lists, so I have um, a whole heap of people coming in through different uh, methods into my email list and as they come in through that method I have they get a tag assigned to them so I can see how they came in and then if they engage in another way they get out a tag so I can go in and go hey this person's actually downloaded five of my things they might have downloaded my um uh, my Facebook uh, um, using Facebook um, thing they might have loaded my lead generation on this you know my five different things that I've put out there so I can see they're really interested so I could maybe reach out to them personally I might try and find them um, and just see if they need my help, okay? Because they're obviously really searching and looking for someone. So they allow you to make notes if you are talking to people and, and just keep track of it. So future pacing or future casting, I, I hadn't heard it called future casting until the other day I was listening to a Russell Brunson um, webinar on funnels basically. But future pacing or casting is when you talking to someone marketing, they use it in webinars a lot or in sales letters where you future pace them, meaning that you put them into the future. So you get them to start imagining what their life will be like if they do what you want them to do. So for instance, I might future pace someone in my weight loss or my health club 
um, you know, and imagine in one year's time what it's going to be like when you're wearing that, you're on the beach uh, in, in um, Maui and you're in your bikini and you feel fantastic and you're not worried about people pointing at you and laughing at you um, and you feel amazing and the way your husband looks at you now and how he can't get enough of you and how proud your kids are of you. So basically I'm future pacing them into what's going to happen, what their life is going to be like if they do them what I want to do and that's a very powerful marketing technique. Um, basically getting them out of the headspace they're in now, get them to start at desire what you're doing. So future pacing helps with that desire. Um, trial close. So trial close is something else that they use in webinars and even sales letters and things like that where they ask a whole heap of questions where the answer is hopefully yes. If they're your target market, the answer is yes. So you're asking a whole heap of questions all the way through where in their head they're going, yes, yes, yes. And in webinars, you'll see they'll say, type yes into the chat box if you agree. And they go, yes. And what they're doing is they're trial closing you because if you can get someone to say yes, and I think it's like five or six times, then when at the end, when you go, do you want to buy my course? People just go, yes, because they're already programmed. The head's already in this yes space. Uh, well, you know, if you go no, and then you fold your arm, no, and then you're stubborn, and you're not going to do anything that anyone wants. Well, this is the opposite to that. So it's basically, that's what they call trial closing them when you're, you're getting them to say yes. Um, a desire amplifier. So that's basically something that's going to make them desire whatever it is, your product or your service that you've got. Um, that you've got right now. So it might be um, a unique selling uh, property, um, a, unique, a unique selling a USP, unique selling property about that, um, whatever that benefit is, or you might use scarcity or something like that to increase their desire. Um, CTA is a call to action. So basically everything that you do, you want to have a call to action. So for instance, at the end of this um, Facebook Live, I'm going to go back and do a call to action to join my Facebook group, okay? Because I want everyone in my Facebook group um, getting the value that I'm creating, the content, and also not just taking from me but sharing also um, asking questions but also answering questions and adding value to the Facebook group so my call to action from my Facebook lives is always um, go my go to my um, Facebook group um, so everything that you do you want to be even creating a blog always has to have a call to action at the end of it otherwise why bother um, you know you, you want to tell people what you want them to do so an OTO or a one-time offer, that's something that you would use maybe at the end of a webinar or in a sales funnel where you're offering them a one-time offer. Um, they're never going to see this again, okay? USP is unique selling proposition, sorry. So that's basically your product or your service has a whole heap of um, has a whole heap of things about it, but then it has a whole heap of benefits about it, and has a whole heap of benefits of the benefits. And what you need to do when you're working out how to sell it is work out, one, who your avatar is, and two, what is that one thing about your product, that unique selling proposition that's gonna really turn them on, okay? So talk about that USP. And what is it about your product or your service that differs it from everything around it? Um, and, you know, it, it could even be just that you're gonna give them your one-on-one -on -one time and they're gonna get, you know, six one-on-one, -on -one, one hour coaching sessions with you if they buy your webinar. That, that might be the USP. Um, but it's normally a benefit that's gonna really turn turn your avatar on, okay? Uh, value ladder. So a value ladder is what we talk about. Um, basically, it's kind of like we use a funnel to take people through a value ladder. Uh, or they come through one funnel and then they go through another funnel and another funnel. And basically what you're doing is you're adding value. So each time they go through each thing that you're putting in front of them is maybe more expensive. So you're walking them up this value ladder. So you take someone from a tripwire offer where it's very cheap or just a, a free lead generation and you might take them up to like a $25,000 coaching. If that's what your um, product, your service has got, you might take them up to that. So that's a value ladder. Um, upsell is basically when you sell someone something and then when they, they go to the thank you page, it's like, but wait, there's more. Um, you can now get this and you offer them something even more expensive. Okay, so because studies show that once people have bought something once, it's kind of like this, oh, they've, they've already mentally broken them down a little bit and they're more inclined to buy again right then, right now. Whereas if you waited till you send them an email tomorrow, you know, by then they, they may have like started to feel guilty about their credit card or, or starting to, you know, decide, you know, they've got stronger and, and they don't want anything else. Whereas you upsell them straight away, they're more inclined to buy whatever it is that you want. Same with a downsell. Um, you could downsell them with something cheaper. The upsell is when you're upselling them with something more expensive. Downsell is when you downsell them to something cheaper. Um, so a soft close is when you're doing like a webinar or even a sales letter, um, rather than doing a hard close, which is where you start value stacking and scarcity, adding value, scarcity value, a soft close is when you do um, 
you might ask for their permission to give them a special offer rather than going forward and giving them the hard close offer. A hook is something that hooks your prospect in. So you want to start off, whenever you're doing something, you, you need to start off with a hook. So something that's going to uh, keep them till the very end. And sometimes on a webinar, it might be, hey, those people who stay to the very end are going to um, get a massive uh, you know, free gift or a, a benefit or you know, something like that. So a hook is anything that's going to hook your prospect in and make them you know, go, through, go into your funnel or do what you want them to do or buy your course or something like that. So from a novel point of view, a hook is at the very beginning of your novel, you want to hook the reader so that they can't put the book down at the end of each scene, at the end of each chapter, you have to have a hook that takes them, keeps them turning the page, okay? Um, so that's, that's basically a hook. Uh, pattern interrupt. So a pattern interrupt is something that grabs their attention and basically um, breaks them out of their thinking process at that time. So Tony Robbins uses pattern interrupts in that he swears. Okay, and when he swears, it's kind of like people get broken out of their their natural sort of thinking process and order, and they um, and it grabs their attention. So that's what a pattern interrupt is. So you can have pattern interrupts. It doesn't have to be swearing. It can be pattern interrupts within your sales letters and um, in your webinars and stuff like that just to get people's attention. Um, an SLO is a self liquidating offer. So that's something um, that generates a lead while offsetting the cost of advertising. So for instance, when I first started trying to build an email list with my books, um, I was following a system where we give away a book for free and I was using Facebook ads to do it. So I was actually paying to get people onto my list. It's costing me money. I um, think it was like 30 cents, uh, an email address I was getting onto my list. Uh, and look, I didn't even know how much each customer was worth to me. I hadn't worked that out. Um, so a self-liquidating offer would be something that gets them onto that list while also generating an income that will um, cover the cost of the advertising. So it will go towards the cost of the advertising, the offsetting that cost. Because uh, once you've got a customer, so some people don't see the long-term plan. It's like, well, what do you mean by you just barely breaking even in that funnel, but I've got a customer and then I can, I can advertise to them again and again and again. Uh, and if I get my Facebook group and the health club and I can put product in front of them, things like that. Okay, so it's a self liquidating offer, something that generates a lead while offsetting the cost of advertising. So a tripwire is similar to an SLO. Um, it's a small offer, usually between $5 and $50. So it's sold to um, email providers after they opt in. So um, they opt in and then it's like they get sent this tripwire. Basically what a tripwire is, it's to let you see who your buyers are. So you're always going to have people that come in and watch the free webinar and they're happy with that. Okay, oh yeah, you've got some information and then they go away. Whereas I'm... I'm I'm a buyer on heat is what they call. If I get in there and then I want more information, I want all the information, I want to totally, I want to immerse myself in that and I want to, um, you know, I want to know everything I can about it because I don't think I'm an expert until I do. And I'm not happy and I'm, I'm the buyer on heat that basically um, gets taken up the, the funnel very, or down the funnel and up that value ladder very easily. So I'm the one who trips that tripwire and then immediately gets sent the next thing and the next thing. Now, tripwire is also there to um, offset your advertising account, but it also lets them know who these buyers are because um, you know um, I think it was um, oh what was his name Kennedy Dan Kennedy uh, a buyer is a buyer is a buyer okay and it's so funny because my husband was bitching about getting spammed by this four-wheel drive um, he bought he bought some I think some lights for our car from this four-wheel drive site that's over on the other side of Australia and he's like oh no I just keep getting emails from the spam blah 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 he's not got a marketing mind and um, I'm like oh and uh, well why don't you unsubscribe you can just unsubscribe and he's like oh yeah but they've got a couple other things that I want and since then he's gone on to buy um, a ground sheet for out the front of the tent he's got a thing that pulls you know one of those shelters that pulls out from the trailer he's bought the portable toilet you know so he's <laughs> he might not be a buyer like I am with informational courses but where camping uh, and a four-wheel drive site comes in he's their avatar right so if I put my stuff in front of him he just called me a spam artist um, they put their stuff in front of him and he buys all right so um, a buyer is a buyer is a buyer and that's where a trip buyer is there to identify who your buyers are. Um, now, a value stack is something they use when they're, especially when they're doing webinars. You can do it in sales as well, but it doesn't kind of look as good as when it's in a, in a webinar. So, a value stack is when you're trying to get them to buy, and this is more a hard close technique. Um, you get them to the end of the webinar and you are saying, um, okay, if you get this now, you're going to get this and this and this and this as a bonus. But what they find is if you just say this, 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 and this, and hey, this is how much it costs. All they hear is the last thing, and that's how much that costs. Um, 
Whereas if you say, you're gonna get this, and it comes up like with a bullet point and a line, and then the next screen is, comes up with that one, and then number two. You're gonna get this and this. And you're not just saying number two, you go back to number one and number two. Next screen comes up, you go through again. Number one, number two, number three, next screen comes up. Number one, number two, number three, number four. That's what value stacking is. So you might've heard some people talking about value stack and not really know what they're talking about. Um, but so yeah, the reason I do that is because people don't perceive the full value of your offer when you just say it all in a line, so the value stack. Okay, well I think that that's everything that I can think of. Um, if you think of anything else that I haven't covered in marketing, terminology, acronyms, things like that, please comment below uh, and I'll get them added into my blog and I hope you got something out of it and yeah, that you're having a great weekend.